Most of you know I love a good FPS game, but today, nope, not today. Today we're going to talk about the games that nobody loves. They get no love. Well, maybe a little, but not a lot. Welcome to the page, everybody. Chaos here. Today, we're going big. We're bringing back the top 25 series. If you enjoy these, let me know. We're going to go with the worst FPS games ever released. This is not going to be easy. Let me know which of these you have had the, the displeasure of playing. Drop a like, guys. Make sure those notifications are turned on. We're over 20% on notifications turn on make sure you ring the bell and make sure it is on on your phone as well here we go the worst of the worst well at least the top 25th worst robocop 2003 now this is a first person turd i said yeah turd developed by titus interactive the same team that made superman 64 the story was based on the various robocop movies and it was a first person shooter that should have been good and you could use all of robocop's gadgets as weapons take down various crime syndicates in the city sounds cool on paper but in practice no. Buggy, slow, repetitive, ugly, terrible controls made it nearly unplayable in certain sections. I've said before, Robocop needs a good game. It would be amazing. This was not it. At number 24, The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. Despite the AMC Walking Dead show being such a huge massive success, we haven't really had any good games. I know we've got games based on The Walking Dead comics, but the show... No, we just got stuff like Survival Instinct. It was a first-person shooter prequel to the AMC show, and it had you going from place to place trying to recruit survivors to your gang while finding resources. It sucked. Graphics sucked. Shooting sucked. Survival mechanics sucked. It sucked. Story was dumb. It sucked. Yeah, all of it. I would pay a lot of money for a high-effort, big-budget game based on that universe, but I don't think it's going to happen. At number 23, guys, if you make it all the way to the end of this video, Make sure you let me know in the comment section so I can heart your comment because you're the real MVP. The History Channel, Battle for the Pacific. With a title like that, it has to be bad, right? Battle for the Pacific was a World War II game seeking to capitalize on the success of games like COD and Medal of Honor, and it was published by Activision. It launched in November of 2007, and it was ripped apart for everything. Visuals, gameplay, technical issues. Plus, it launched just a few weeks after the revolutionary COD 4, which was ironically... Also published by Activision, the History Channel Battle for the Pacific was like a trip back to the early 2000s of shooters. That's not a good thing. This one isn't either. I wanted this to be good. Battle Los Angeles. Yeah, Battle LA. Big dumb action movie, right? Released in 2011, it followed a group of soldiers trying to fight back against an alien invasion in Southern California. Naturally, there was a movie tie-in game. Basically, just a Modern Warfare 2 clone where you ran through the streets of LA and you shot aliens with really bad controls and unresponsive shooting. Now, in theory, a game about aliens attacking Los Angeles could be fun. But Battle Los Angeles, it was bad. It was... How do you make a game about shooting aliens boring? Uh, they did. At number 21, Target Tear. Released for the Wii in 2008. There's your first clue. Target Tear is a first-person rail shooter where you fight against terrorists attacking various real-world locations like the Golden Gate Bridge, the Denver International Airport, and even an airliner as it's on track to crash into the White House. If you think the game looks like crap, it's because it's actually a port of a 2004 arcade game and the Wii version was supposed to be a step up. Why is the Wii even, why is Nintendo even doing this game? It was bad. It actually won the IGN Worst Visuals of the Year Award in 2009. Not only is it ugly, but it was completely unfair. After all, start as an arcade game just trying to take quarters. I mean, if you're looking for the worst Wii game ever released, it's up there. At number 20, Raven Squad Operation Hidden Dagger. Perhaps the most try-hard name on the entire list. It was a hybrid of a tactical FPS and a real-time strategy, which a few games have tried throughout the years, but it never works. And surprise, surprise, this one didn't either. You played as an elite group of soldiers sent into the Amazon rainforest to retrieve valuable intel, but the levels, graphics, and gameplay, uh, they sucked. How many times did we say sucked in this video? Let me know. The game felt generic, uninspired, which are two of the last things you want to describe your shooting game. Avoid it at all costs. At number 19, do you guys remember the, the Battleship movie that came out in 2012? I, 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 have to, I have to admit, I watched it a couple times. Well, guess what? There was a video game adaptation developed by Double Helix, and somebody thought it would be a great idea to make it a first-person shooter. Let, me, let that sink in. Battleship 2012 is a first-person shooter game based on a movie that was based on a board game. This could all be forgiven if the game was good, but alas, it was not. Battleship was a full-priced, ugly, repetitive, short, and flat-out awful movie tying game that nobody remembers. And we're going to keep it that way because we're moving on. At number 18, Painkiller Resurrection. Now, Painkiller is one of the most beloved FPS games in history, but in 2009, more than five years after the OG game, 
we got a standalone expansion called Painkiller Resurrection, and most fans will agree uh, it was a giant step backwards. It was basically a collection of unreleased levels and weapons and mechanics from the original game, but it's not hard to see why they were never put out to the public. These new levels were extremely uninspired, and the new mechanics felt out of place. Not only was Resurrection a bad sequel to Painkiller, it was just a bad shooter in general, and since it came from such a beloved classic, people were pissed. It sits at a 38% on Metacritic and a measly 27% approval rate on Steam. Just play the original. At number 17, Resident Evil Survivor. Now, RE has always been a third-person franchise, first and foremost, but they tried to branch out. They did. This was their big swing. Then it was a big miss. Released in 2000 for the PS1, Survivor was a first-person light gun shooter with a weird plot, as in tradition with Resident Evil and much more action-oriented than previous titles. This was back before Resident Evil had really figured out its identity, and it's arguably still not have, doesn't have it figured out. So Capcom was trying anything they could for the license. Needless to say, Resident Evil Survivor was a hot mess. The graphics were bad, even by PS1 standards, and the gameplay was extremely basic and often buggy. It also didn't help that Survivor mode, well, it made use of almost nothing the Resident Evil franchise was known for. It made it feel more out of place than ever. It was ripped apart by everybody. It sucked. At number 16... Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified. Do you remember in the early 2010s when people were really trying to make the PS Vita a thing? I'm not saying it was a bad system, but a lot of companies were definitely going too far with what the system was actually capable of. Case in point, Black Ops Declassified. Developed by, uh, I don't even know, Instigate? Oh, Instigate Games, a release for the Vita. It was an attempt to bring a full-fledged COD mobile to platforms. Yeah, it just, it didn't work. You had online multiplayer, you had co-op survival, it had everything. It was ambitious, but the end result, it was bad. It was incredibly buggy, the controls were bad, it has some of the worst AI I've ever seen in a AAA game. This is by far the worst-reviewed Call of Duty game ever. Most people have rightly forgotten that it even exists. At number 15, Terminator 3... Uh, War of the Machines. Does anyone else find it weird? The Terminator is such an awesome concept, but we've never gotten a really good game. At this rate, we have way more terrible Terminator games than decent ones, and the War of the Machines is one of the worst. Released in 2003 for the PC, it was a large-scale FPS game based on the future war between Skynet and us. The gameplay was copy-pasted from Battlefield 1942, but with all the charm and the fun factor sucked right out of it. Buggy multiplayer, stiff animations, bad level design, full priced. I really hope one day we get a great Terminator movie, but the War of the Machines is bad. And sticking with movies. Aliens Colonial Marines. Come on. I, I don't even know why I bring this up. You guys already know. I mean, awesome premise, weighed down with a bad story, tons of bugs, and a whole lot of lying from an original E3 demo. You played as a group of Marines. And you're, it's the 1986 Aliens movie. If you've never watched it, go watch it. The concept was great, but the execution was terrible. It was horrible. I'm not even going to go into detail. It's one of the worst games ever made, and it pisses me off every time we talk about it. At number 13, Rogue Warrior. In recent <laughs> years, what happens with some sucky games is they garner a bit of a cult following thanks to it being so bad. But I'm confident putting it on today's list because it was horrible. Rogue Warrior was released in 2009 had a very troubled development cycle. You played as a real-world U.S. Navy SEAL, Richard Marcinko, but in a completely fictional story of him being the beast in North Korea, blowing up missile bases and slaughtering soldiers by the hundred while spewing one-liners. The game was terrible. A lot of people have revisited it in recent years, and like I said, it has a cult following because it sucks so bad. Nobody's going to tell you it's a good game, but a lot of people will tell you it's so bad, it's actually entertaining. I mean, does number 13 sound like a fair spot? I think so. Let's move on. At number 12... Duke Nukem Forever. You knew it was going to be here, you just didn't know where. Launched in 2011, 15 years of development, worst comeback game in gaming history. The classic Duke games are some of the best. But Duke Nukem Forever was sad. It was a horrible, horrible failed attempt to modernize a character that did not need to be modernized. Bad jokes, horrible story, terrible gameplay, bad graphics, and way more bugs than you would expect from a game that had 15 years in the oven. I don't think Duke Nukem Forever is the worst game ever or whatever, but it's certainly one of the most disappointing games ever released, and I feel confident it's at number 12 today. We're getting into it, guys. They're getting bad. At number 11, Black Water. Released for the 360 in 2011, it's a mostly on-rail shooter where you played as an operative trying to fight back against the warlords in North Africa. Now, aside from the story being pretty limp and uninteresting, the gameplay was some of the worst in the entire list, mainly because somebody thought it would be cool to make this a first-person shooter with the Kinect. Yeah, woo, 
The Xbox 360 Kinect, come on. It was ripped apart by everybody. It was just bad. I am so glad that the Kinect days are behind us. At number 10, Recoil. Yeah, it's just Recoil, but with a K. It's cool, right? It's edgy. It's a multiplayer FPS base for the PC and 360 in 2014. Let me say it again. It was released for the 360 in 2014 after the Xbox One came out. That should tell you right away why we're here with it. The premise? Well, it was bad. The gameplay was shallow. The content was limited. It was almost universally panned by both critics and gamers. The game has since been pulled from sales and the servers shut down. So if you never played it, guess what? You're probably never going to get to. And guess what again? You're not missing anything. At number nine, Shellshock 2 Blood Trails. There's some cool names on here. There have been a lot of games throughout the years that try to be a hybrid of a military shooter and a horror game, kind of like Spec Ops The Line or even COD World at War to an extent. Games that don't shy away from the horrors of war and, they, and the toll that it takes on the combatants. Shellshock 2 was trying to be something like that set during the Vietnam War, but it didn't work. Bad graphics, bad AI, bad level design, bad controls. whole thing could have been finished in a matter of hours. A horror game set during the Vietnam War is a good idea. The Shellshock 2, it missed the mark. At number 8, Far Cry Vengeance. Now, Far Cry is a pretty consistent franchise for the most part, but Vengeance was a rare misstep. And when I say misstep, I mean huge. It was released in 2006 as a Wii exclusive. There's your problem. It was basically just a remake of Far Cry Instincts, which had come out the previous year on the Xbox. So as you'd probably expect, the transition from controller to Wii remote, it was horrible. The graphics also got a hefty downgrade since the Wii was such an underpowered console. There's a whole list of new technical problems. It is the worst reviewed game in the entire franchise for a reason. And I think Ubisoft is happy that everybody forgot about it. At number seven, Land of the Dead, Road to the Fiddler's Green. It was a 2005 zombie movie directed by none other than George Romero himself. The movie? Okay, it was good. But it got a video game prequel called Road to Fiddler's Green, which was, I don't even know. It was released for the PC and the Xbox in 2005. Had you playing as a random farmer named Jack, trying to fight off the zombie outbreak and make his way to a safe haven where other survivors were bunkered down. It was bad, guys. Multiple outlets even called it the worst game of 2005, and honestly, I'm not going to argue. I mean, Land of the Dead is a good zombie movie, but Road to Fiddler's Green is one of the worst zombie games ever made, and there's a lot of zombie games. At number six, Mob Enforcer. Now, depending on where you are in the world, you either know this game is Mob Enforcer or Chicago Enforcer, but both versions are the same. They suck. Now, the gameplay, it's interesting. Level design's a bit ahead of its time, thanks to it being very open-ended. Just about everything else about the game, though, it was bad. Repetitive enemies, extremely punishing AI, weak weapons, and extremely long load times. Mob Enforcer or Chicago Enforcer, it's a bad game, and anyone who's played it is going to agree with me. But now we've reached the top five, my friends. Here we go, the worst of the worst. Drug Wars, 2009. A lot of the worst games are the ones with <laughs> super uninspired titles. Can you guess what Drug Wars is about? Well, it's a futuristic sci-fi shooter where you play as a dude trying to take down various drug bosses. At least that's what I think it is. Interestingly, this game has a different title when it came out. Originally, it was called Merchants of Brooklyn, which is pretty cool, but it was so poorly received that the devs made changes and relaunched it as Drug Wars. Shocker, it sucked. It's sitting with a 34% depressing approval rate on Steam, and I doubt the devs will ever try to revive it. At number four, World War II Combat Road to Berlin. Developed by Direct Action Games and released for the 2006 Xbox PC is one of the most historical shooters ever made. I'm kidding. It was one of the worst. The game was set during the last days of the Second World War and was meant to be this very realistic experience, but ultimately, it ended up on this list. It's awful. Terrible controls, bugs. It was extremely obvious the game wasn't done when it was released. It sits with a juicy 20% on Metacritic, and it's well-deserved. I can respect the desire to make something epic and realistic, but this wasn't it. At number three. Terror Wars New York Invasion. Released for the PC in 2006, it looks more like something from the 90s. You played as a medical student in New York who has to take up arms and try to fight back an alien invasion. And the developers apparently put a ton of effort into accurately recreating downtown New York. Looking at the gameplay, you probably didn't think the team put more than two hours into it. Remember, 2006, same year Gears of War and Oblivion came out. It's not fun. It's not pretty. It doesn't sound good. It's just bad. Sitting with a 24 on Metacritic, making it one of the worst reviewed FPS games ever released. But there's two that were better, or worse. World War II Combat Iwo Jima. Now, aside from having the most boring name in FPS history, it was developed by Direct Action Games again and released for the Xbox and the PC in 2006. In case you're wondering, yes, this is a sequel to World War II Combat game that we talked about a few minutes ago. So, you know bad i'm not whatever it sucked come on i can respect the desire to make a realistic game about a real world conflict but if you're going to commit something 
you need to make sure your team's up to the challenge. At number one today, the worst FPS game ever made. Da -da -da, Rambo the video game. I have a personal vendetta against this game. I love Rambo. And I was stoked when they announced a video game based on the original trilogy. But what I didn't know was it was going to be the worst FPS game ever made. It's ugly. It's a rail shooter. Three to four hours. It's boring. It's repetitive. It looks like crap. If you're lucky, it'll just crash on you so you don't have to play. I know some people like playing bad games just to laugh at them. But Rambo is no laughing matter. According to Metacritic, this is the single worst reviewed first person shooter of all time. And it gets today's number one spot. Let me know one FPS game that deserved to be on this list that we forgot. And I'll see you guys soon.